Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Pints with Air. I'm Brent Heffley. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Air Acoustics. And I'm here with Ariel Brown, our VP and Senior Engineer, and Ryan Berry, our CEO and Expert Technician. Cheers, everyone out there. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're weathering any southern summer heat or storms. Like I just heard about the crazy storm in Europe uh, that happened with the flooding and stuff. It sounds nuts. Yep. Uh, but yeah, hope everyone's well. Um, we are going to have a cool episode today on DSD and DOPE, D-O-P, no E on the end there. Um, <laughs> but before we get to that, let's talk about our pints. What did you guys bring out of the fridge today? So another local one is from Ryan's current. My hometown. Nice. Person brewing. I think I surprised him by this one. Ooh. Devil's Dunkel. The birth of brewing. Nice. One the dark, darker side. Indeed. And that's, yeah. uh, Does your can oh, say yeah. something under birth of birth? Under birth oh, yeah. Of brewing? Yeah. I'm not sure what, if that's what that is is supposed to mean is that another name of the uh, Maybe so. or the i don't know what that is <laughs> mine How says spineless you... bastard i was just wondering if it was calling me something <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many breweries does bertha have uh they have a uh, city star and bertha brewing are the two big ones i can think of um nice. i don't think there's any other ones other than that but there's two of them in you know colorado so small right. time you're gonna pack in the breweries yep <laughs> yep well, I'm pretty sure the uh, the beer I chose today, the, the town only has one brewery because on the can, as they announced, they are at the center of the universe and the middle of nowhere. And it's uh, Criminal Gravity, which is based in Enterprise, Oregon. Ah, yes. So think northeast corner of Oregon, one of the places with the least amount of air traffic in the U.S. Um, <laughs> I don't know, kind of up in the corner, equal distance from Washington and Idaho. Right. little tiny place but they make some amazing beer and i i picked the pilsner uh because it's summertime right uh and it's i have to say it's delicious it's maybe one of my favorite pilsners i've had oh, very nice. so yeah i've always liked their stuff they they do a really good job they have kind of a pretty narrow range of what they do but they do it all really well um so good stuff good very stuff good. all right so Let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, in the streaming world, obviously there, there are lots of streaming options, lots of things, but there are two basic formats. Well, I guess three kind of, we have PCM, we have DSD and we have DOP. Um, so Ariel, you want to give us a quick summary of just what DSD is and what DOP is in comparison? So, uh, so ignoring, ignoring any compressed or, or lossy formats, you know, standard way to digitize audio signal is with PCM, which stands for pulse code modulation. That's where each, each sample um, is, is given a, a code, a binary weighted code representing its amplitude at that point in time. Um, DSD is fundamentally different in that it is um, a one bit format, you know, with PCM maybe 16 or 20 or 24 bits, commonly 24 these days. Uh, DSD is a one bit format where it is, um, each bit is describing a direction chain. So that if the average level, uh, the intended analog level is higher than what the, the previous number of samples have averaged to is higher than, than the bit is a one. And if the signal needs to go lower, then the bit is a zero. Uh, so it's an interesting format that way. And it's, um, it, um, it was developed by Sony. It's actually, um, my understanding is that it, it's actually um, part of the, uh, can be part of the chain uh, when it's from an analog to digital PCM conversion. There's actually a point in that chain that is essentially DSD. And so, um, anyway, so the fundamentally different, different that way, just the one bit format at a much higher rate, the standard rate being um, uh, 2.8224 megahertz, which is related to the CD standard of 44.1 multiplied by 64. Okay. And so it's a very similar 
uh, bit rate to CD quality um, is, is a standard DSD, the standard, the 1X, 1FS, DSD 64, all names for the same thing, the original DSD standard. Right, because that was developed yeah. for that, for SACD discs as it, they were right back in the day. Yeah. Um, 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 yeah, the physical disc format that, that, that used DSD was called SACD for Super Audio CD. You know, some of that Sony tried to do, and you know, one of the, the likely theories is that, you know, was that the CD licensing oh, was running out. So one of their very large revenue streams was ending. Um, and so, so they wanted to find something new to, to either to, um, um, to replace or to, um, um, uh, to retain that revenue stream. And it never really took off except in very, very niche, niche markets. So, it, you know, it's still with us. Sony, Sony abandoned it quite a while ago. Um, they're still supporting it in some ways and several other companies have still, you know, um, I still kind of pioneer it. So um, it's still around and it has, it has its benefits, um, but it's a, uh, but it's an odd beast. So that, so as DSD um, compares to DOP, because those are both out there in the world. And I think maybe right. what, what's, what is DOP in comparison and why does that exist? Right. So the DOP is not a standard in itself. DOP um, it is not, um, I, you, know, you know, one of the points, one, the biggest points we want to make here is that DOP um, is not um, DSD that has been converted to PCM so that it can be um, um, uh, so that it can be converted to analog in PCM form. That's not what it is. Which its name is kind of unfortunate because DOP stands for DSD over PCM, which right. tends to make people believe that it might be a conversion process, and that's not the case. Right. I mean, I could see easily how you could get that from the name. Right. Similarly, you know, the, the, the converse, which is the native DSD, is, is kind of a misnomer in itself. It's more of a raw DSD. Right. Yeah. So, so, so the whole DOP came about because um, trying to uh, transfer um, a DSD file between, let's say, a computer and the DAT. Mm -hmm. um, over interface, um, there weren't any standards yet to do that, particularly over USB. And there's even still, there's not a true uh, USB sanctioned standard uh, to transfer raw DSD. And so, um, DSD over over PCM is just transferring DSD using the uh, using the PCM protocol. So, what it does is that it takes. Um, so a PCM frame is 64 bits. There's 32 bits for each channel. And what DOP does is it takes 16 bits of DSD data and plops it into 16, um, 16 uh, bits of the PCM frame and then uses another eight bits to, uh, to basically insert a flag so that a receiver can then be watching for that flag and say, oh, hey, this is DSD, it's not PCM, I need to handle it differently. And so um, it, it, it gets around um, uh, uh, the lack of a native uh, DSD communication standard. That's all that was. And so uh, the, 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 the computer just adds some bits, uh, formats it in the, DOP, in the PCM standard um, I2S frame, and then the receiver end sees the flag, uh, parses it out, gets the gets the original bit perfect DSD data out of those 16 bit windows, and then and, and then and then buffers it and then streams it continuously. So the DSD data is not touched, it's not converted, it's not changed. It comes through bit for bit, and so it you know I, I know there, there was a lot of concern that it. You know, one of the purposes was to you know convert it to PCM to make it easier to convert to analog in the end. Um, many many standard DAC chips and and certainly ones we use are fully capable of 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 of, of DSD native conversion. Mm -hmm. um, so when we get that PCM, it's yeah, it's, it's also good to note that 
we're not doing any strange, you know, treating it as PCM or anything when it comes into the DAC. It, the the DSD, the DOP um, format will let us know to treat it as a DSD signal that comes in and it's treated just like any DSD file would. Right. So now there are, um, there, there are, there's kind of a standard way of, of actually sending um, DSD over USB interface now. Um, it, <laughs> It's most commonly referred to as DSD native. DSD native originally is um, that term was used more often as far as the D to A conversion, and so I like to use that that, that native conversion of DSD as opposed to converting to PCM. And so when I talk about sending DSD over a USB, I like to call it DSD raw uh, because it's the raw DSD data. It's not converted; it might be packaged in a different format such as DOP, but it's still, um, but, but, but anyway, so um, 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 so using some of the ASIO drivers, now you can send um, DSD raw without packaging it in that PCM formatting, uh -huh. um, but that's just semantics. Um, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So is, DOP was really, really a way early on in USB primarily right. to get DSD yes. functioning as a streaming option for people, right. which is great because there's a lot of great DSD recordings out there in the world. Um, and since it's just repackaged, it's like having a, uh, a DSD box inside of a PCM box. <laughs> um, and you open the PCM box and go, oh, wait, this is DSD. Let's put it in the DSD stack and send it to the DSD. Sure. You know, right. Stack. Right. So, so, so one of the, one of the, only real disadvantages of DOP is that because of the overhead needed for the for the flagging bits, you basically have to double uh, double double the bits required to uh, to um, uh, communicate it. So, like in some of our slightly older USB products, you know, we could only do um, you, you know so 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 to transmit standard DSD sixty four, um, you have to package that in a, in a 176.4 kilohertz PCM frame. Uh -huh. um, and so you are simply doubling the, 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 um, the bit rate necessary. And so, um, and so, but then, you know, with our more, with our more current solution, um, uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, being able to communicate with, with DSD raw over the USB interface, we can we can double that rate uh, by using raw because it requires half half so many bits. Right. So, so I'll ask a loaded question here. I'm, I I know some people swear by that native DSD sounds different than DOP. Is there any possible way that they could sound any different? Um, it's it's far fetched. Um, you know, be, because there's twice as many bits used, you could argue that maybe there's more digital noise associated with it. Um, uh, the USB standard is still fixed at, at, um, um, at its communication rate, so that's not really gonna change. Um, I, I have not been able to discern any difference. Um, because we handle it the same on our end, it still is the raw DSD and it's processed to analog as native DSD. Um, I, I, I don't believe that there's any significant difference. And truth be told, I've listened to it too. I just had to ask the question because <laughs> I know there's I, some people that might be considering it. Yeah, I suppose if it was converted to PCM that there would probably be some issues. Yeah. Significant actually, you know, a lot of the DACs, you know, they handle DSD versus PCM entirely different inside, internally. So, you know, right. it's, it's definitely a, uh, it would be, make a difference in what people would hear for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, um, great. Great. Well, that's um, yeah, that's really good. A good description of it, and I think obviously going with the raw DSD through a native DSD converter is the way to go if you yeah. if you have those recordings. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the, again, the traffic's less, so you know, if you're going to you know think about the the potential of a minutia of a difference, then yeah, there might be. A little bit of the gain with doing the raw DSD, and why not at that point in time? I mean, why why add the traffic? It doesn't give you any advantage to send it DOP if yep. the native is available for your DAC. Yep. Um, and then, of course, as you go to the higher rates, then it's you know you get basically twice as much 
due to, right. the, due to the lower overhead. Right. And then currently somebody can stream native DSD, raw DSD to a QX520, mm -hmm. QX8, uh, QB920 uh, in our lineup um, at this point. And then any other future stuff, hopefully we'll even yeah. get to higher rates than what we currently have in those. Yep. Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, if anyone out there has questions about those differences or, you know, DSD in general, what uh, what you can get from Air Products to uh, to stream that, uh, and what streaming services even use DSD, or if you have to record yeah. that directly onto a hard drive, drop us an email, pintsatair.com. And uh, until then, cheers. 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 Cheers.